In security matters, biometric data and the OPM breach. The National Journal now reports hackers made off with the personal information of more than 20 million people, including 1.1 million fingerprints. It marks a new and frightening advancement in cyber theft. Joining me with the latest is Jim Penrose, Executive Vice President of Cyber Intelligence for Dark Trace. He's also former chief of the Operation Discovery Center at the National Security Agency. Jim, give us some background here. Who do these fingerprints belong to, and why is this aspect of the OPM breach so alarming? This is critically important because these fingerprints belong to people who hold national security positions. They've been um, vetted to have security clearances through the OPM process. So obviously, any compromise of their personal information, it's a big risk to their personal security and, of course, the ability of the government to do those missions. So these were the cream of the crop. These are the people that deserved all of these clearances. This was basically top secret information that the government had because they, they had to be cleared. Can biometric data be encrypted? Well, biometric data, of course, can be encrypted, but you have to follow the right procedures to store that and to make sure it's protected. In this case, there was an actual masquerade operation that happened using credentials that authorized access to that material. So even with encryption, you have to be able to prevent the unauthorized access of that kind of information by an outsider who's masquerading their way into the network. Now, I was speaking to a friend who works for the federal government about the stolen biometric data. That worker raised an interesting point. Personal identity verification, or PIV cards, contain digitized fingerprints. They give government employees and contractors access to federal information systems and federally controlled facilities. Theoretically, could those responsible for the OPM breach create fake PIV cards? Now, in other words, did this breach compromise the entire federal ID system? Well, I can't really speculate on whether or not they could make a fake PIF card, but just think about our digital lives in general. Even our iPhones use fingerprints every day to authenticate us to various apps and to every aspect of our digital life. You can see how there's massive implications uh, for the U.S. federal government and our employees, especially if their lives could be manipulated at the whim of a foreign power. Now, the federal government can issue new Social Security numbers and offer credit monitoring services, but they can issue new fingerprints. Can this be fixed? Well, really what has to be done at this point is other me mechanisms of authentication need to be applied. So you're going to have to use two-factor authentication and make the amount of time that any piece of data is valid and usable much less. So in combination with things like biometrics, you may be able to still use them effectively. But in the end, you're going to have to employ new technology and better kinds of threat detection systems to make sure that these compromises don't go unfound for, for months and even years. We thought biometrics was the end-all, be-all. It's what you know, what you have. Now now we've got to go a step beyond that if they have some of our personal data like our fingerprints. Absolutely. And we're going to have to find a way to bring a new technology to the fight. The attacker has a paradigm that they've been employing year after year and month after month, but we haven't made them change. So we have to find a way to use our own unique identities in terms of the enterprise, the networks that we run, to find a way to make a, make a discovery about what's weird and unknown in that environment and network and use that as the means to discover the intrusion. Jim, before you go, I'd like to get your perspective on the motive behind this attack. If China is ultimately found responsible, what's their motive? Well, I think their motive is clearly a national security motive. They're trying to do intelligence against the United States. And to get information about the people that make our government run and work every day and provide security for our nation is absolutely critical. So they're trying to figure out where the pressure points are, who could be man manipulated, and how they can even change our national policy. Information is power. And that doesn't have to happen overnight. The, the fact that anyone has this, they can use it now, they can use it a year from now, right? That's right. This kind of information can be used um, when the time is right with a strategic uh, uh, goal in mind. And we really have to find a way to, to be able to detect that. Even in the private sector, we're going to have to get better at noticing what's, a, what's different. Just like our bodies are able to figure out when we're sick, we have to see something that doesn't belong and focus our attention on it as soon as possible. Good point. Jim Penrose, Executive Vice President of Cyber Intelligence for Dark Trace. Thanks again, Jim. Thank you very much.